Sorry about that. All right. I have started the recording. All right. <clears throat> Welcome to session 24. This one's going long. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, let's start with a retelling of the previous adventure uh, to earn your character points. Um, Glup and their fellow uh, thief uh, went to the um, to the guild because we were trying to find. We found out that there was information about a giant pile of shinies coming into town, and we thought we might want to fund, help it fund our our our, uh, cid, our city exploration. So uh, yeah, we went to the thieves guild to find out what information they know about it. Apparently, they didn't know much about it as we did, but. If we got found about information about, it, we would be able to uh, get the first takes. And Glup, uh, hearing about uh, a certain person being in town, was able to help track down that certain person, um, which found out vital information for us and got us the first take on loot. Excellent. Good job, Glup. Have a character point. All right, I'll jump in. Henri was with Glup. Well, but before that, uh, Francis had uh, trouble sleeping and uh, looked out the window and saw a bunch of zombies heading towards the dock. That kind of kicked off the adventure, but ultimately Henri uh, went out adventuring with everyone. Um, and joined, Henri joined Glup uh, to gather info from the Thieves Guild. Uh, they were looking up records to try and find where the caravan was going to be going and the route it was going to be taking. Uh, Henri... Uh, used a character point to uh, use the its elementary talent, which uh, allowed him to find out how difficult it would be to find information and cut that difficulty in half. Um, unfortunately, he wasn't able to uncover the route, but he was able to learn that um, if we could figure out the start and end point, uh, then it would be relatively easy to deduce. And then I think from there, some of the other adventuring companions uh, found out more information. So that was pretty much it that uh, Henri found out. Excellent. Character point for Henri. I'm going to oh, go with my shaky go. So Sorry, you can go ahead. No, you first. Well, I was just going to say, I do not remember very well what I did. I know that myself and I believe Chris Lazar was the other Crimson Guard member, right? That's right. Uh, we, we went on a scouting incursion to try and uncover uh, information about the route as well. Didn't we discover something extra, though? Who, who, who figured out that there was something sussy going on? Chris Lazar did. That's what I thought. Somebody did, but, you know, we were together, so I'm going to take partial credit. And, yeah, and you figured out where the, um, the start of their route is going to be because you... Followed them to the warehouse. Right, 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 right. right. Yep. Reconnaissance, baby. <laughs> Good job. Back turns a character point. Who's next? Um, uh, Araxi. Uh, spent a lot of the time on the rooftops scouting out potential roots and trees and uh, just general scouting information. Uh, she also uh, figured out uh, the uh, boats that this caravan is going to use um, and now has some sort of plan to go uh finesse a orb of darkness or something like that from the Applied Thaumaturgy Guild uh, for potential use in this upcoming heist. A fairly common thief tool. They're little glass marbles and when you smash them in the ground create a sphere of magical darkness. For a few minutes. Don't need more than a few minutes. <clears throat> Good job. Araxia Security Boy. As a side note, Araxi did also uh, at least see, if not meet, Evitala at the... Uh, that is true. Yeah. So, um, so characters met. If uh, Araxi could not have met Evitala because I think Araxi would have spit in Evitala's face had it actually come down that way. 
And this is, of course, the version of Elatala that's pretending to be a pirate captain. Yes. <laughs> no, she was pretending to be a celebrate admiral at that oh, time. Oh, yeah, that's right. Which w wouldn't pass muster with several of the children here. <laughs> Who's next? Uh, so Reggie, um, if I remember correctly, hunted down a bunch of, or went to the mercenaries and got them interested in this whole endeavor. And hopefully got them involved in the gigantic legal proceedings that are going to happen soon. Seven mercenaries, in fact, yes. I also drummed up business for our budding mercenary supply group. Indeed, which might be about to be finished. We're going to find out. Um, one more, I believe Crystals are. Uh, yeah, Crystals are, um, as, as was said, went with Bax to the Crimson Guard headquarters um, and uh, I guess tricked an adult out of their spyglass that we didn't end up needing. But I mean, why not? Um, and then uh, uh, we, uh, like I said, we found out where the thing started by going and checking on the commander um, and then uh, tracking them down to sea. And on their way, um, he had spied a uh, some kind of symbol on the carts um, and relayed to that to the thieves. And I believe they had figured out that, that was like an old version but linked to dwarves yes actually a slight correction on that um while it is linked to the dwarven underground specifically it was uh remy lit that um they met not barnabas uh, barnabas at that point in time was uh disguised as a diplomat from corlanth and was not uh present in the marketplace it was uh, remy who was in the market at that point in time so yeah, uh, also it was Remy that left the mark to begin with, so that makes a little more sense for the whole story. Um, so yeah, uh, Chryslazar and uh, Reggie, you each get a character point. Um, oh, and uh, the, the spyglass, uh, you didn't trick him, he offered it, and you promised to return it. <laughs> so uh, if you didn't return it, then you tricked him, I guess. I mean, I was trying to get something, get like stuff out of them, like, right? Like, that was my... I guess not tricking, but I was trying to get provisions. I was like, give me something, please. Um, so yeah, I will be re returning it to him, but yeah. And honestly, if he'd had something that would have been more useful, he would have given it to you. Um, but you're trying to be a spy, and everything he has has the Crimson uh, Guards logo branded on it in a gigantic red font. So, yeah. It's like we're carrying around the box that has USMC, like, fucking spray-painted on the side, and black paint kind of yeah. thing. Ah. Alrighty. Um, your other characters also were able to do their various things. Go ahead and give them their experience point and or coin for the day if they did either work or um, studied. If any of them need to make rolls, let me know. I know that our Crimson Academy friends were not present at the Academy, so they're not making any rolls tonight. But um, I think... Somebody mentioned off stream that they needed to uh, take some tests at the university. Yes. It's, um, let me check those exactly where it is. Nest also went to little upgraded hopes of potentially finishing that today. Uh, 301, Advanced Thaumaturgic effic Efficiency um, Theory. All right, so you, you want to get into that class, which means you need to make a Cunning plus Scholarship check, and your target is five. You need five successes. That's one success, Why? so you didn't pass the exam. You may still, um, yeah, you may still spend experience points, uh, just not on that class. Yeah. Or I'm sorry, you, I'm not spend, you may still earn. You earn your experience points. Uh, you're just not spending it on anything that day. Uh, needing five successes and only rolling five dice is uh, a little bit rough. You might want to consider um, just having your character go to the library and level up their scholarship.
Yeah, I'm going to level it up after I level up my, my potential, so I have the actual requirements for the skill that I'm looking for. Fair enough. Um, all right, uh, yes, Oak Brine. Well, actually, before we move on to Oak Brine, did anybody else need to make any rolls for anything related to their other characters? Not that I can think of. Fantastic. The characters that were in the hospital um, tr attempting to overcome the plague, did they manage to get their schoolwork to them? I, I think Wampy did something else. I don't know if you want to count that as anything. Uh, is Wampy meditating on the, um, the moon and the... Wampy was writing letters back and forth with knowledgeable people about the mood. Okay, that counts. Okay. Yeah, I think Zara was basically sent someone to try and get books for her so she could continue to study if that's possible. Totally. They'll send your books. And to that point, um, I, I just had a quick question. So I believe that you can level up potentials if you're at the SAU. Yes, that's correct. And uh, just to make sure I understand this correctly, whenever you go to cast a spell, are you rolling a number of dice equal to your potential level? Unless you have it memorized. If, if you're using memorization, then you just have to pay the tax and, and it automatically works. If you're, you don't have memorization, then you're either using improvisation or um, education, both of which require a roll to see if you succeed. Um, and that would be just your potential that you're rolling. Now, um, yeah, actually, no, no, that's, that's it. It's very simple. <laughs> Yeah, um, I remember yeah. the memorization thing. I forget how you actually attain memorization, but... Oh, I remember what I was going to say. Um, you you did learn a spell that lets you guys collaborate. Uh, you guys have a spell... I, I think most of you added it to your spell books. It's called Delterra's Stable Meta Aether. Um, this is a spell you can cast to give someone else a die to roll on those checks. So when you're doing improvisation or if you're using... Um, as, uh, education to cast a spell from out of your spell book. Um, you can get extra di dice from having a friend cast that spell or from you casting it before you make the roll. You casting it before you make the roll doesn't make sense because you're spending attack, you're, you're taxing your um, potential by one to get an extra die, which you would just have if you didn't tax your potential, but for collaboration, it's really useful. Got it. And every time you cast a spell, you actually incur one potential tax? That's right. Well, if it's a first circle spell. If it's a second circle spell, it's two tax. Third circle, three tax, etc. Got it. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So your potential level also caps what rank spell you or, or circle spell you can cast. Because if you only have two... Um, the, t two points in it that you could tax, you couldn't pay a three tax cost. Cool. Okay, that all makes sense. Perfect. But um, if you have friends that are giving you dice, then they're paying the cost, and you can potentially yeah go outside of that. So there's the the, the meta aether basically lets you guys collaborate on bigger spells, so you can cast spells together that are outside of what any individual could have cast. Um, okay, yeah, go ahead and, and level that up. Um, and then, yeah, let's move on then to um, Little Oak Brine. So, the uh, Carpenter and the Blacksmith have added 10 to it, which takes it from 88 to 98. If anyone who's working on that today can add two more successes to it, then it's finished. Dust is there. And having can I argue? Be really useful for today's session. What? What was that, sorry? Having it finished will be really useful for today's yeah. session as you guys are trying to prep for a robbery and having access to it as a resource for making those preparations will be really beneficial. Well, Nest worked there yesterday. Yes. Like, so, in the last one. So Nest can make a roll. 
Can I argue a leadership role? I know Nest is a child, but Nest is an older child with respect in the community. <laughs> um, the, the carpenter and the blacksmith already know exactly what they're doing. They don't need any um, anyone else barking orders. It creates a too many cooks in the kitchen situation. <laughs> All right, I need to hit uh, both these dice then to finish it, I think. Unless I can add my potential onto it. Ooh. Do you have advantage? Can, can you argue that any of your traits give you an advantage on this roll? I'm going to argue that de dedicated study gives me advantage on the roll because Nest would have been very... Uh, Scrupulous on every time that the carpenter or the blacksmith gave Nest a instruction, Nest would have been very scrupulous and made sure that they could do it with the best of their ability and um, making sure before they even ca cast anything or do anything to assist, um, they would um, that it would work. Okay. They were doing the math before they did it. That, that makes sense. So Do I get to add both my potentials? I don't think so. I think I only get to choose one, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, no, th this makes total sense. Uh, so, you, you, like you said, you've been studying, and in your studies, you've figured out that your magics may be able to assist you. And so you're going to use a little bit of magic along with your uh, hard work to try and get this done. What's that going to look like, just narratively? Uh... Honestly, it's mostly just Nest uh, using uh, Blake over and over again to just um, make sure that, like, oh, I need... Can, can you get me? It's there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's basically what this looks um, like. Yeah. And it's uh, Vigor plus Labor, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Two successes. Oak Brine is built. Which will mean um, for next session, uh, or yeah, for next session, since it only just got built this session, but for next session, or the, the next time we decide what kids are doing, um, the services of Little Oak Brine are available as places you can go work. Uh, they don't earn you experience points, but they will pay you uh, a gold coin for your services, and you can learn social skills from Grammy, um, general despicableness from um, uh, Pinkle, and, <laughs> and all the other things. Oh, and archery from um, Gorham. So that, yeah, all of those, uh, all the people from Oak Brine are now back in the Little Oak Brine area. Um, including Willica and the Miller, and they're all uh, available again. I may create expanded versions of the things they know how to teach, um, but uh, for the moment, basically uh, the old Oak Brine list is valid again, as though the town had moved here. The one exception is um, the fishermen. They're part of the fishing guild now, so they're not there. Uh, question uh, for the kids that forget the name of the curse, but they uh... Cinder. Yeah. Um, yes. So now we're going to want to roll for your resists to see if you overcome the cinder to become available for adventuring again. Oh, cool. Nice. I was actually going to ask about taxes as well. Like, were they able to actually recover any tax during this time? No. Oh. It's, yeah, you're not in a situation that's conducive to rest. Um, they surround you with blankets to try and keep you warm, but uh, fires don't light here, and the place is as cold as winter. It's not yeah. a, a situation that's conducive to rest. Um, it is, however, impossible for you to spontaneously combust here. That's why you're there. So, yeah. Uh, 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 how about uh, Echelon's character who's currently underwater? Actually, yeah. So, Mari, you're the exception. Um, I'm sorry, Shari. Shari is the exception. 
Uh, Shara, you're perfectly comfortable. You totally get your, your two points of rest. Um, <laughs> because, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, Glup's friend, um, Oh, no. Who? The Lorpen. other frog? Lorpen. Lorp Lorpen has made a an extremely comfortable um, mud hut in the bay, underwater. So, yeah. So Sh Shari <laughs> is in complete luxury. Alright. Um, but Shari still gets to roll um, the resist to see if she overcomes. Who is it that had to overcome two points? I have them in my list. I just have to scroll down and find it. There it is. We got one. Was it not Shari? It was Shari. Yeah, Shari got the double dose. Well, P has recovered. Excellent. So, Shari will... Um, you have one progress towards recovery. Uh, and cool. if, you, if you get a second progress on the next day's roll, then Shari will be back in action. Sorry, I missed that. What do we need to roll uh, for? Your resist. Okay, cool. You have recovered. Um, did you have two characters that had it? I believe it was just Zara. Okay. But actually, let me let me double check. Shari, Araxi, Wamp... Oh, wait, uh, sorry. Vivian had the two characters. Yeah. Yeah, Araxi and Wampy. Okay. Oh, yeah. You and know Araxi that... recovered last session, so Wampy's right. now recovered. Wampy's recovered now. Zara has recovered. So Shari is the only one left that still has Cinder. But Shari is better than she was. Yeah, I think... Yeah, definitely it was just Zara. There was, I, I can't remember, but there, I think there was a run a while back that determined, that checked to see whether or not they got it, but Zara was the unlucky one that... Yep. Because all three of my characters helped with the O'Brien rebuild. Yeah, and it was it was kind of a random chance thing. I mean, playing around in the, the ash of that building that you guys explicitly knew had burned from a sender incident. <laughs> it's a bit risky, but eh. You got fun treasure out of it, right? Okay, so now that we're done teaching bad examples about playing in um, construction yards, um, on to the adventure, I think. Yep. I'm still not sure what character I'm going to bring. Can I get a rundown of what we have on the table? Well, this is day two of the mining cooperative being in town. Um, oh, and right. almost certainly uh, there's going to be an opportunity to rob them, which I think a lot of characters have spent the previous day setting up to do. That's right. Um, but if for some reason you kids wanted to just completely drop that project, let the adults handle it, and uh, move on as... Reggie did recruit seven expert mercenaries to carry out your plan for you if you guys wanted to bail on it. Um, you could also continue your investigation of the criminal syndicates in part two of that uh, story. Um, explore the Undercity, explore the Northern Forest, investigate Miss Mabel's mysterious nighttime activities, uh, which she has finally resumed now that the crisis is over. Um, you can uh, travel around the city visiting various markets to try to get more upgrades to the orphanage. Um, and you can visit the Pebble Street Gang to see what they're up to. Hot tip, today they're probably up to the same thing that you guys were up to, which was robbing the mining cooperative. Not gonna lie, I kind of like the idea of letting Reggie's gang handle it so that we can like simultaneously accomplish multiple things at once. Assuming that uh, if we don't go, that we'll still get the same amount of treasure. I'll let Reggie explain what he promised the uh, the mercenaries. Yeah, I mean, so I basically promised them... Well, I basically said that... I, I promised them that they could buy good 
uh, quality gear at Little Oak Brian. That's that's my main promise. But I would also promise them that I would give them information about any information that I had about the location of stuff uh, of the the mining cooperative assets, um, so that they could take what they're owed, basically. So. Which would fundamentally mean that you guys probably wouldn't get a share if you don't participate. They, they would still get robbed, just not by you. <laughs> but little O'Brien I'm, will. I'm working a different angle, you know, because I mean, like, a mercenary that comes into a lot of money and has a place to spend that money will probably spend the money. So. Yep, and little O'Brien finished just in the nick of time. They were not robbing anything. It's fully laundered. It was per we paid we. It was money we we retrieved for a reasonable good or service. And if they pay a little bit extra because they're, they're currently loaded with cash because they just took it off of the cart, I uh, want to get rid of that cash pretty quick. I'm happy to launder that money for them. We're seven uh, mercenaries representing seven different mercenary companies um, are ha have pledged to go to Little Oak, Brian, and uh, a few of them showed up early the previous day uh, to just basically stake out a table and enjoy the uh, the food and stuff in the not yet completed um, uh, dining area. So um, <laughs> some of your construction projects from yesterday were literally building the, the rest of the inn around them as they uh, had drinks and food. But now it's all done. So, um, yeah, w which adventure does the party want to go on today? And which characters do you want to bring up? I think we should do part two of it, personally. Yeah. And it, honestly, Wampy would be a, in for the ride, but I, I think I have to bring up Roxy for this again. Yeah, I'm trying to debate if I want to bring Glup, the thief expert, or if I want to bring uh, El Ross, the magic expert. was very useful for the previous one. But who knows what benefits magic would have. Well, you might want to do a little bit of sort of metagaming with your party here and see if um, somebody wanted to bring some magic that'd be helpful, like blink or invisibility. Yeah, I actually was planning on bringing Francis, who does have blink. And Del Teller is a stable meta aether if anyone wanted to do some uh, pairing up on things. So is this a general consensus that you guys want to do the robbery? Yep. yep. All right. Yeah. So yeah, um, figure out which characters you want. Okay, here's the meta, the meta to it is, how would we be? doing the robbery on our side. Mm -hmm. Well, here's what you know. You know what route they're going to take uh, because you know where they're starting in positions. You know which dock they're going to be loading the carts onto three ships at. Uh, and you know what warehouse they're going to be leaving. Um, there's a few different options, but you guys made enough of a study of both the maps and the, uh, the rooftops that you have a very good understanding of what a, a smart tactician would do to try and get through with minimal opportunities to be robbed. Um, and minimal doesn't mean zero. And there's a really good opportunity, a place where you can be on the rooftops, drop um, globes of darkness onto the street below, and still be able to see the tops of the carts sticking out of the dark darkness globes, which will give you very easy targets to jump in. You also know from what you found out the previous day that for whatever reason, uh, they have moved the gold from inside the carts into chests that are mounted on the front and backs of the carts. So the gold is out in the open where it could be robbed. In what would normally be like decoy chests that have worthless stuff to rob, there's precious gold coins. Uh, 
Um, are you guys going to go to Little Oak Brine to make your plans? Oh, yes, a good a brown of milk and cookies would be great too for uh, robbing me, robbing people. Grammy's kitchen is up and running. I feel like we could narratively say that Miss Mabel takes all the kids to see the opening of Little Oak Bride before they go to school. That is reasonable, actually. I I will allow that. So um, yeah, so everybody. You, you are all enjoying breakfast at the f newly opened Grammy's restaurant. There's some ne'er-do-wells in the corners, um, but you, Re Reggie recognizes all of them. And uh, yeah, you guys are, the, the whole family is there, uh, including um, Mrs. Burtail, who's there with uh, Raska, um, Mangra, and Bibbin, and they're they're very they're they're in much better spirits than they were um they did find out recently with absolute certainty that their father has died and so they're planning a funeral for him he was eaten by feral goblins with vulture wings that were kind of half on fire partially made of lava it was terrifying and horrible um and they're they're working through that um, but their mother is back, and, um, yeah. Can I have Ness be over there helping with, uh, the children? Yes. Right. Uh, and the Nest would also learn that, um, Mrs. Burtail is, uh, due to receive a commendation ceremony once the Crimson Guard is finished with all this mining cooperative kind of mess. Um, so there, there's going to be a, a formal, um, commendation ceremony and a formal funeral uh, as uh, Mr. Burtail was a Crimson Guard um, operative, basically. He was not a member of the Thieves Guild, so he wasn't a Wolf Clan operative. He was a different kind of operative um, that they really were just kind of experimenting with. Um, but they, uh, yeah. So they, they didn't travel in disguise. They were pretty open about who they were at first, but as their mission got complicated, things changed. They had to improvise a lot of tactics. And then the moon fell. And, uh, yeah. We know the rest. Oh, that poor family. I would hate to meet the person that made those goblins. Uh, Nest would find out that um, Mrs. Burtail is um, considering a very strange uh, letter that she received from a goblin that would like her permission to attend the funeral. Uh, is this Pavan by chance? Yeah. I, I, Nest will... Uh... Let her know that Pav is a friend, but a bit weird. Friend of the orphanage, friend of the kids. She, she says, G given that he was killed by a goblin, I'm not sure it's appropriate. Pava is not that type of goblin. They would Would you like to convince her to, to hear Pavan out? and? Yes, yes I would. Okay. Go ahead and make a persuasion roll. Uh, actually have a little bit of dice. This is empathy for sure. Don't think I have anything that I could boost this with. Nah. Okay. Uh, she agrees to, um, to... Uh, write Pavan and allow him to come to the funeral and hear him speak. Hear what he has to say. Alright. <sighs> Meanwhile, with the planning group... So we, we need to get the Orbs of Darkness, right? That's what we kind of need to get. 
you'll need orbs of darkness and then you'll need to coordinate exactly like how you're going in to try and steal the stuff yeah. um glup uh one of the ne'er-do-wells in one of the corners of the room um uh, gets up um uh, gives a generous tip um uh, and walks over and uh, sort of palms you a little letter on his way out the door. Um, you, you recognize him immediately. He's one of the Fox Den teachers. It's not even like he's in disguise or something. But since nobody here knows what that is, uh, he just s stealthily hands you this little, uh, little envelope. And opening it up, you see that um, you've been approved for um, first um, ambush along the, the route. Uh, the, the note says that basically um, it's going to happen in the afternoon. They have a, um, a plan to um, infiltrate and get an accurate accounting of what's in the caravan uh, in the morning. Um, apparently the, the previous evening's infiltration did not go well, but it doesn't mention that in the letter. It just says he's got a plan to get into it in the morning, and then when they determine the time is right, um, a signal will be sent to have the courts clear them for transit so they can try to get through the city. Um, and you've got first dibs on um, on ambushing um, along the route. They ask that you please choose a location near the start of the route uh, for your ambush so as to give other thieves a chance further down the route. Um, but yeah, that's it. And we know where that is, don't we? You do. Yes, I'll be take. I'll be holding on this letter so I can use it as part of my receipt. Excellent. You're getting it. It's all about the paperwork. So, with permission granted, you guys are clear to. To execute this however you want to. I'm still not entirely certain which character would be best. I have one um, helping me decide. Um, would I, um, considering their end, like, I know that just directed us toward the beginning, but um, considering it's ending on ships, um, would mean his affiliation with that um, shipbuilding have any clout on inspecting ships and getting away with it kind of thing? Hmm, probably. Now, you'd have to get somebody else to vouch for you because obviously your, your um, claim wouldn't be believed as you're a child. But if an adult came with you and said, yes, this is Shipmaster Mina, yeah, that, that could get you into places you don't belong. Absolutely. As far as I'm aware, only a couple of us are actually official thieves. Um, Jackie, what did Laika do yesterday? I don't see anything on the spreadsheet. I don't remember. Did like it go to school? I think it might have been an oak brine situation, but I think they have like a vicar of one and just didn't get any successes or something like that. Alright, it it's up like to you that. if um I know that Laika has a lot of experience points to spend. So if, if Laika was at the university, uh you could have done quite a bit of leveling there and like a, is a magic user so that yeah i actually yeah. wanted to discuss uh if there's any way for me to start working towards like the bardic stuff there um, is um like also yesterday had access to radico have you taken a look at what radico can teach you not yet it is in the uh directory called uh, i think clubs and private tutors not directory, file. It's in a file called Clubs and Private Tutors. Uh, 
go ahead and take a look at that. See if that interests you. Um, For sure. I I, uh, I think I'll be taking Leica out for this adventure. Okay. You can go ahead and, and if you spent... I'll study you. <clears throat> yeah, if Leica spent yesterday studying with Radico, then you can level up whatever you need to to get ready for this adventure. Okay, cool. So if I'm trying to put a point into arc, and sorry, psychic potential, and I have, yep. what, what? how many points do I need to spend on that? Three experience points or three character points? Um, so everything is spent in experience points. So you convert your um, character points into experience points at a three to one ratio. Every character point is worth three experience points. And then however many experience points you need to level up your psychic abilities, um, also, keep in mind that there's some uh, pretty cool talents and spells available there. The spells don't cost experience points, you just have to write them down in some kind of a, a notebook that you can purchase. Okay. Um, can I get a second to like uh, look yeah. at the skills? And... You're probably going to recognize some of them as they're straight out of yeah. Harving's playbook. Okay, um, well, she's doing that. Uh, Ed, may I assume Reggie is coming again? Uh, yeah, Reggie is still, uh, still acting in this arc. He's got a lot to do. Cool. Yeah, I decided to bring Elros. Since we're bringing a bunch more magic users... Be cautious in this being an all magic users uh, outing, as um, you probably do want some people that can actually succeed in in basic roles as well. And your your magic users have, uh, in many respects, sacrificed uh, leveling up skills and and aptitudes for just raw going down the magic power uh, trip, which is great. I mean, magic is awesome, um, but yeah, it might be good if one or two people can you know pick a lock or stealth or. Uh, swing a sword or whatever it is you guys expect to involve in. Yeah, I'm, I'm yep. still, I'm, I'm, I'm torn. You know, I, I'd like to level up Leica and do some more magicy stuff, but if it turns out we need some brawn, I would love to take backs out. Like I'm, I meant, I'm, I'm cool either way. So, so we, maybe it's a good idea for you guys to think of what your plan is and decide yeah. if your plan is going to involve any physical fighting or if it's going to be a, a stealth and social cool. plan. I mean, I'm ready to Raxi, and Araxi definitely does a lot better if we could do an aerial hit and run attack, basically. What if we, uh, what if we made the chess away nothing? And just, like, pull them up on strings, up onto a, onto a roof, and then ran away with it. You know a way to do that. If only Araxi needs to go down there, like we could blind them and Araxi gets down there, hooks strings onto as many chests as we can, and you you all can hoist them up. That could work. But first we would need to, we would need to alter the weight of the chest because like hundreds of pounds of gold in each chest will be hard for like several kids to pull up. Have any of you learned Delterra's gloves of lifting? Not yet, I don't think. It's taught at SAU. I have not. No. no. All right, it's a first circle spell taught in the supervised casting practice, um, also known as uh, SAU 102. Um, and it creates magical gloves that while you're wearing them, anything you grip with those gloves has no weight. I actually could have written that in my book, even though I don't have a uh, spell. Um, what's it called?
Are the chests of gold our target, or did we want to try and get inside of the caravan at all? I think the gold is your target. The chests just happen to be where it's located. Yeah, so we could, yeah, we get to the other route since we could use the, the smoke to go into the things and try to grab what we can. Or we can go for the open chests. Or we can try and uh, drill a hole in the bottom of the chest and just, like, drain all of the gold. I love this idea. Yeah, the only problem still is the weight. Gold is heavy. That's a fact. So yeah, if you have a spell in the spell book, but you improvise, does I guess does it have actually having the spell help at all, or um, if you actually have improvisation, then um, you you can use that. And I think well, let me go look at it. I'm pretty sure that it's a fundamentally the same. Wait, what did we just say there? Cut cut a hole in the chest and do what? Drain, Drain the gold out. I'm still not sure what that gets us other than gold all the ground. Well, I mean, there needs to be other steps in the plan. So, like, maybe we <laughs> acquire some sort of cart to load up with the gold. Maybe we have some sort of tarp. But why can't we... The chests are not the heavy bit. The gold's the heavy bit. Shane, you guys never really explored the Undercity. Who knows where those storm drains might lead? <laughs> well, we—I uh, was—I was gonna say we could, um, uh, given some material, build basically like funnels to send them off into the alleyways. Hang on, we have a, somebody who could do artificing here, don't we? Could we have somebody do artificing to basically create gloves that have that magical effect? We need to get um protect. We need to um have the materials to do that. But uh, two of well, us. Rex can go shopping. Rex has got money. Because uh, we two of us have access to a quality ten workshop. Yeah, Rex has got money. If you need like materials, just tell Araxi what materials, and we'll figure it out. Uh, what would it take to craft an item, like with the with Delterra's magic, well, uh, gl um, gloves on it? Uh, Delterra's magic gloves is a first circle spell. It's relatively simple to execute. Uh, you would need to find magical ingredients that you could use to power the artifact. So you would you wouldn't be able to just make it out of plywood and rubber bands. You actually need to get something, something like um, the ice crystal that um, Bax has, or something similarly um, magic, inherently magical for you to use as a power source. Which uh, which eldritch crafting uh, did you want to use, or which dadal crafting? I mean, was this um, artificing? I just figured it sounds like artificing to me. I. I'm not the one with the character, but it does there's lots of ways to do to do magical items. I mean, you could make a potion that does it with um, alchemy. You could, um, I mean, with animation, you could just make a zombie carry the gold for you. Yeah, I was actually just thinking that exact thing because uh, I have Francis, so I could animate a corpse that's large enough or strong enough to carry one of the chests. Um, I was actually going to ask too, like if we go the other route of like making gloves or whatever, or poaching, won't that be a single-use sort of thing? So, like, that will help us carry one of the chests, but then maybe there are multiple chests, and we need to come up with potentially multiple different options, I guess, to get as many chests as we can. Well, my thought with gloves was that gloves would have a quality that would be taxed for each one that we took. Ah. Uh, yeah, I don't know how that worked. But, again, yeah, yeah. Not entirely sure how craft this would. 
Yeah, because uh, because if it was post shits, shit. it would be a time period, wouldn't it? Duration. So I have an answer about your question about uh, the difference between esoteric education and improvisation. So education, you do need to have it in your spell book to cast it, um, but you just make a test against the difficulty. Um, if you fail, you suffer some uh, consequences, but um, if you succeed, it happens. Improvisation, you can only use if you have advantage. You can't use it if uh, the situation is outside of your domain of what you're good at. Um, but if you have advantage, um, you can use it, and when you do, you can pay an extra tax on your potential to make your roll against half difficulty, which makes it much easier to succeed at those rolls. <clears throat> okay, so actually owning a book doesn't actually help? Not with improvisation. With improvisation, you need to have advantage. It needs to be something that you're, you're good at, and you need to be in a situation that's favorable to you. Um, with education, you need to own a book. But with education, you don't need to have advantage. You can just cast out of the book whatever you want. Okay. So we have a couple, yes, yeah, so we do definitely have a couple of routes. We can get magic gloves, yeah, or drink some magic potion, which I have access to both. I have two characters that have, can do either of those. And then Francis could animate a corpse if we wanted to do that. Um, how many. Did our intel tell us how many chests of gold there are? Yes. Yes, it did. There are seven carts, and um, each cart has four chests of gold. So there's 28 oh, chests of gold available to be stolen. These chests are big. Um, bigger than you expect one child would be able to carry, but maybe a very strong adult. Or maybe like two or three children working together. Um, do we have, does, the, does it say what we're allowed to take, or does it, like, have a limit? Oh, uh, yes, you are only permitted to take one quarter of the chests. You need to leave the rest for uh, people downstream to, uh, to steal from. Uh, so now, only... <clears throat> there's a stipulation of that. If you do succeed in stealing more, you simply have to um, basically give it up to whoever was next in line. So if we steal more than seven chests somehow... Yeah, if you somehow steal more than seven chests, you'll have to give up some of that gold to the next thief uh, organization downstream. Meaning, meaning the goal is minimum seven. Yeah. If we want as much as we could get. And any, anything else on Are that? Are we able to steal anything else if we were to, say, come across it? So Reggie might be able to help you out with that, since Reggie has hired some additional help that might not necessarily be considered part of your team. Um, yeah, you can talk about finagling the paperwork the way you want to do to, to exceed that limit. In terms of stealing things from inside, uh, they basically tell you no, that is covered. Uh, we have a, a, another thing going on for what's inside the carriages. Uh, the chests on the outside are uh, what you have permission for. Now, you can always disobey the rules. Um, Rashi doesn't give it, a shit about the rules. Yeah, if you get away with it, you get away with it. And if you don't get away with it, then consequences befall you. Listen, we have paperwork here. Will Reggie's uh, gang be stealing some of those gold chests as well? Oh, they definitely want to. That's why they're here. They're and here for back that, pay. I'm just wondering if that'll eat into, like, do we... Do the chests that they steal count towards that seven, the, the, the number seven that we're trying to hit? That depends okay. entirely on how you fill out the paperwork. They are not, they're not part of our, of our safe crew. They're independent... Uh... True. Takers. Reggie did not recruit them. Reggie merely said that Reggie can provide them with information. So that they're not joining Reggie's mercenary group. Right? Yeah, so like, they, they might be subjected to the Thieves Guild if they, the Thieves Guild, like, finds out that they're stealing it as well. Reggie, Reggie shakes his head and says, no one's stealing anything. 
if 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 you if you can if you're owed money, you can collect that money. This isn't a theft. This is debt resolution. That's if, what ta if taxes if taxes aren't theft, this is definitely not theft. This is even more clearly not theft than taxes. If you take money, then that's a gray area. It's it's actually it's a pretty dark gray area. Um, it's, it's deeply dark gray area, actually. Yeah, and bear in mind, anything you do steal as an official member of the Thieves Guild under Glup's license that you guys have, um, you are stealing for the Thieves Guild. You'll get a cut of it, but yeah, that's not as big a cut as if you do this off the books. Yeah, where you would theoretically get everything, but then it would truly be stealing and not a, a lawful tax collection. Reg, Reggie shrugs and says, nobody, nobody in my plan is stealing anything. They're just collecting what they're owed and they're going to have a lot of extra money that they, they're just going to come into a large amount of extra money. And if I want to sell them and I just pick up a random thing off the table, this cup, which was once owned by the great Glorbhammer the Dwarf who fought in the Holy Wars, then, hey, if they want to pay, pay a lot of money for that, that's not my problem. That's a totally legitimate transaction. Pinkle is by your side and was like, oh yeah, I knew Glorbhammer. Great guy. He's totally backing you up on that one. So what <laughs> the problems I'm dealing with in my head is I don't think Araxi understands how the Thieves Guild works. And I understand it, but I really don't think Araxi understands it. And I think even if Araxi did understand, they would still not follow the rules. So Araxi is viewing this as only Glup has to follow the rules. Raxi is just going to throw the coins in the ocean, right? Yes and no. There's a, I have a little thing in my head about a plan, but I'm not going to reveal it yet. Fair enough. And that's what I wanted to do at the end was I wanted one frog to be on this and figure out how to get on one of the boats and then anything that was left at the end of the route, just dump it into the water. <laughs> And, and it will be collected. I guess it doesn't even need to be done in this run. Like, yeah. next session, can someone go collect all the shit I dumped in the water? I like the idea of, like, Kristen using Francis to get a zombie to act as our, our mule, you know, to carry more treasure than we normally could. I genuinely don't know how powerful of a necromancer we have on our hands, though, so... Maybe we get one mouse, say, carry one coin, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't yeah. know. It's just say, I'm an extremely powerful necromancer who, who's like just read a bunch of books on it. Definitely a mediocre <laughs> necromancer. I think our best bet, honestly, is to make gloves or a potion of Delterra's hands of holding. And for that, I think, I think we need one of Tysus' characters. I'm not sure who's the artificer there. Or Elros, I'll do it. I, I uh, like, uh, yeah, Elros technically doesn't have, he doesn't have the artificer thing, but he does have magic hands. I have a logistical question. So if we have someone with magic hands and the caravan's moving, how many chests can we feasibly steal? All right, so here's the cool thing about the Delterra's Gloves of Lifting spell. Um, once you grab onto the chest, the, the total of you plus the chest weighs you. The chest does not add to your weight at all. Now, you can't just tie a string to it, grab it, and then pull it up, because as soon as you let go, the chest weighs a, a ton of gold again. But as long as you hold on to it, they only have to pull your weight up, which means the lightest among you could go down there on a rope, grab the chest, and get pulled up, and all they have to do is pull up the weight of a tiny Anu. Or a I really want to do... Is stack the chests one on top of the other, and then grab the right. one on the bottom. Mm, the, the one on the bottom would become weightless, but the one on the top wouldn't. Well, if you had a hand on each one. Right, that's what you want to do. You want to put a hand on each one. Okay. So you grab two chests. Just lead your arm against it for balance, and lead it back onto you. Well, there, there's two chart. There's two chests on each cart, and I assume they have some sort of handle or lock mechanism or something, right? Four I'm not saying um, 
within the grabbing distance. At any given time, you can grab two at a time because you're yeah, on the front of the cart. Yeah, two back on the, the front, two on the back for each cart. Right. So you would reasonably be able to grab two of the cart or two of the chests at once. Depending on how spaced up. out the carts are, if you drop down between two carts, you might be able to get four. Then you need gloves on your feet, and it gets weird. I'm sorry, would this not just require you to be in contact with the chest? Yes. Like, if I have my entire arm against the side of a bunch of chests that are stacked up, and I'm just able to lift from the bottom, I'm in contact with all the chests, so would that not all apply? You need two things. You need your magical item to be in contact with the chest. Uh, and you need some kind of upward pull to get it up. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Um, I mean, yeah, so you need to be touching it, right? Like, it's so not what, just touching what we just it, need is you we need, need to hold it. We need uh, gloves that go all the like the arm. And then we could carry as many chests <laughs> as our height is, basically. Um, I mean, no, you still we... need to put your arm in a lifting motion, right? You can't carry more than one chest. These are big chests. Have you ever carried, like, boxes that are way too like heavy and you just have the lead to get you with an arm on it yeah but you're not place, you're not going to be the place. the size of two chests you're going to be the size of half a chest right these are going to be large i'm not chests. suggesting that araxi does this i'm suggesting someone like bax does this who's big they're not they're still not going to be can you imagine a child. that bax is big yeah because yeah, they're children their <laughs> arm length is going to be the, two? the chest like, so how tall are these have chests? A, haven't asked Two feet. One of the, the obvious and very dangerous questions. Um, I have I have a thing that if here, I got someone here. What if we create something to be to shrink the chest so we can put them into the palm of our hands? So we can just shrink all the chests and put them into our hands and walk away. Now you're thinking with magic. Do they still have their mask? <laughs> well, they'd be in your glove. Again, yeah. all it requires okay, is you to fair. be able to pick it up. That's that's a fair. I I like the shrinking and they all fit in the palm of your hand thing. That I that I can reasonably see. You grab it yeah, four. Yeah, yeah. But that's a lot of magic. Yeah, isn't that two and different it's so magic? That, is that like two different magic things? So there's the gloves that are can carry them because they're super heavy, but then also shrinking them so that they're small. Um, I was thinking of Elros going to the um, going to the. Um, the school and like I got an experiment. I want to uh, like learn how to like you um, like uh, like um, store more things with this with, by shrinking them. Um, is there any, uh, see if my uh, my professor has anything that can help like any any kind of wand or something I can borrow for to to test things with? Uh, do you want to do that after breakfast? Uh, yes. Okay. Well, when, when we get to that point, once we've decided what characters are going out, that'll be something that you can attempt. So, to give you guys a breakdown of how um, crafting works, right? Um, and this is true of um, all the different things. So, alchemy, um, uh, all, all, all the different stuff, um, including animation. So, Kristen, uh, you, you absolutely can... Um, use magic to animate things. And I know you have a spell that can animate like small like rats and, and pigeons and stuff. Um, that's one way to, to do it with a spell, but you, I think you have, or you at least have access to learning the talent animation, which is a crafting oh, I already talent. have. I already have learned, I have learned awesome. that. Animation is a crafting talent, which would allow you to craft an animated zombie, which is not a spell. It doesn't take a spell slot. But what you will have to do is go get materials to build it, which means you'll probably need a corpse of some kind. Um, you're also going to need, um, let's see, there were three types of things that you needed. There's always three, the, the yeah. construct, the thing, and then the, the power source, essentially. Right. So, like, one of the examples was Lump of Clay, Criminal's Brain, and Focused Moonlight. Right. That's, like, a, a, a basic, low, uh, mundane, low-quality uh, version. 
And then for like more powerful stuff, you would use like full-on human remains, um, the finger clippings of the king, and a bolt of lightning. Um, and the the super stuff, uh, you take an ancient mummy and a dragon's fang and angel's fire, and yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's that's what you're gonna need. Why? I could have sworn we had a list of what they were for. Oh yeah, okay. Parts to construct the entity, an impetus to align the entity to your programming, um, and an impulse to coax it to life. That's the three things you'll need. Got it. So you'll, you'll, you'll need the material it's made out of, uh, the, the m whatever magic thing makes it do what it's told, and then a power source. Can you put the gloves on a zombie? You'd probably have to make them for the zombie. Maybe, though. I had an idea about the gloves when we were talking about trying to figure out how can we carry as many chests as at once. And, but then the gloves have to actually be in contact with the chests in to, order for them to, to reduce be its weight to zero, yes. Yeah. So one of the things that we can try is having, like, a rope or a net or something where the gloves are in contact with the rope or the net or whatever. Could could we and not just chain a rope. bunch of chests together? And then the rope, is, you know, if you're holding out of the rope, that's where all the weight is, and all the chests are just connected to it. Can we not enchant the rope? It just skip the whole glove part. Oh, yeah, can't, awesome. can't you just do that or like a yeah and then rope or whatever? We could t tie them all together with the rope, and then. <laughs> All we'd be carried is the weight of the rope. I mean, it's magic, so... <laughs> yeah. yeah, I imagine you can enchant anything, so it's just... Like, as like we just need a really everything. long quarter, quarter of rope. Still, the question comes down of, like, getting this thing. <laughs> um, a rope should... The rope should be the difficult part. Arachia is the difficult. money to buy like some magical items. I imagine there has to be magical item shops. Or like magical like material shops around. <clears throat> we either need to buy something with this or we need to make it, right? Um, then literally we... all we need is someone hop, someone who can hop from cart to cart and just string up all the chests yeah. and bing and like hold on to it at the end and then like they'll all pop off the carts. Um, Mina has artifice. If that's what we need to make this. I don't know how else we make an item with magic other than buying it from the Thaumaturgy Guild. Artificers produce um, devices, constructs, and machines with magical properties. Basically, we're just creating a magical pulley system. Right, there's no other way to make this Which is other than by artifice, right? Yeah. Enchantment. And with a sufficiently strong pulley system, you don't even need the glove kind of magic if you build it right. Well, we might need it to get it off of the, like, rooftop. It might just be sitting on the rooftop. Yeah, okay, that's fair. That's fine, but, it, but it's our take, right? So, like... Then they'd be stealing from us. That's a different. That's a different. Uh, different problem. Francis will still just animate a corpse, but that'll just be for fun. <laughs> just we, he just wants a friend. Francis just heard us suggest the idea of animating a corpse and didn't hear anything we say after that. Francis just runs off to go do it. Exactly. Yeah. I, f I feel like that means I'm taking Mina out. And I, I can either be working on making a pulley system that can actually pull this shit up, or I can work to if we can get the supplies i can work to have a magic pulley system that <laughs> pulls shit up i mean just regular pulley systems are kind of like magic 
but they don't really require that. They would just only be able to pull up well, like, the, the, so much the, at a time the, instead of like a freaking rope of seven chests. The thing is that we want the if we can magic the rope to uh basically atheists tied together weighs nothing essentially. If we can no. do that Trumpy has an enormous wealth of experience points that they could reasonably spend on leveling up engineering out the ass. Like, I have 16 experience points. Just chilling. Would you be working on engineering? I'm literally just hanging out at the library trying to grow my fucking brain. That's literally all I do <laughs> all the time with this character. Just being a fucking little nerd, waiting for their moment to shine. Well, if Tr if, they, Trumpy, Trumpy, if Francis is going and Wampy is going, I don't know if Wampy, Wampy is not. Wampy can't go because they're sick, huh? No, Wampy can't, is healthy, but Wampy's got bigger things in mind. Got you, bigger things. In that case, Francis, and then we can maybe stick yeah. together a little bit. Yeah, I still, I still think shrinking the chest so that they fit into the palm of the hands is a little bit more inconspicuous. So then we, we're not having to run away with a bunch of giant chests. If someone just walks out of, the, out of the darkness with their hands closed, they're not going to think much as versus a bunch of kids pulling a bunch of giant chests across the cityscape. That's so, a good point. Um, do we need to solve the darkness problem? We probably still want that because otherwise we're just there and they're just watch. They're not going to just watch us wrap up all their chests in a nice little bow. We don't, we don't have that currently. That is, however, one of the easiest problems to solve, as you can solve it with yeah. money by just buying one. Again, like, Araxi didn't actually spend any money on our shopping trip, so Araxi is probably one of our most affluent kids right now. Okay, so so the yeah. darkness problem is solved. Mm -hmm. um, How much is it, like, for the orb? Um, give me just a second. Can I still make an elaborate police system? Oh, yeah. I, I thought that was still the plan. Tight. Trumpy it is. And could I reasonably still spend my experience points for Leica and just have that be a, a different thing we do at a different time? Alright, uh, Globe of Darkness costs two. Two successes. I don't have the biggest of uh, resources, so I'm going to have to use. Uh... So, what is it? Precious gems are successes, valuable coins are dice, and, and pocket, pocket money pips. are pips. Obviously, roll your um, your resources first. Three, four resources like first. It. I need to know. Can you do it? That's unfortunate. I'm going to use can the you pocket do it? money for that. Too. Wait, can you do it vicariously through Kafarik? And he was at Thaumaturgy yesterday, so you, he, had, he bought it with one pip? It, it was just my money? Or what, what are we it's doing a, here? It's a, you, it's a day will allow it. You did know by the end of the day yesterday you were yeah. going to try this. So. Yeah, and so it's just if you, like, yeah, you did the roll, but I'm just saying, like, if you did it through Kafarik essentially vicariously, he has one pip on discount. Oh, so would that would that be a, yep. a an acceptable success in that scenario? All right, and then I just need one more success. Um, all right, so that's one valuable coin spent. I have six more of those in the precious gems still. Globe of Darkness spell acquired. So basically we're going to have the cover of dark that darkness tie his bay chest together with a hopefully magical rope. And yoink as bay as we can. Yeah, and I'm still struggling to try to get a wand or something of uh, shrinking. Well, yeah, either if if, if uh, Trumpy, if Trumpy's gonna do, and um, 
Come on, bully Trump. system stuff. We we either can double up on bully system stuff, or we can figure out a way to craft a magical rope. As the kids finish eating breakfast, um, a visitor to the um, the Little Oak Brian Inn um, comes through the door, um, and is uh, greeted warmly by Miss Mayville, but um, a little coldly by some of the other residents. It's a man made entirely of wood, um, in the shape of an elf. You, you, many of you recognize this um, as uh, what used to be Sapper's the staff, in his new body, so to speak. Um, and uh, he spends a, a little bit of time talking to Miss Maybell, but it's very brief, and then um, comes over and, with her sort of permission, begins handing out bracelets. They're, they're made of um, copper with wood inlay, um, and they fit you all perfectly. Um, there are a couple left over, as um, there are some of you that are not actually here. Or one, actually. There's one left over for when Shari gets back. Uh, but he says, um, I, I made these for you as a gift. My thanks for taking care of me. Um, these should provide you some minor protection from hostile magics. It's the least that I can do. Um, I heard about uh, what happened with the plague, and I wanted to make sure that you all were adequately defended against magical malfeasance. Can you all add to your character sheets? Um, a, it's a basically a it's a bangle of um, minor magical protection. Wampy's a little suspicious of this, and Wampy's going to do it, try to investigate it a little bit. If okay, that's okay. I I guess this would be druidism. Sure. Yeah. Can I add? It? Is it just my druidic potential, or can I add anything to it? Uh, do you have a reason why you would have advantage yeah. on this roll? Alright. Wapi... Okay, I'm going to use We Stick Together. Wapi has told the other triplets about what Sappers told Wapi was the actual reason. It swore them to secrecy, but this is a triplet endeavor to protect them. Okay. Um, yeah, you can add your cunning and your scholarship to this role. Alright. Fortunately, Wapi does not have scholarship, but I do have cunning. Uh, as far as you can tell, the bracelet is a bracelet. It's not a super powerful magical item. Yeah. Um, it does have some magic on it, but it's it looks like it's more like a token gift than um, than anything of super importance. So, so Vivian just said that we as tri as triplets have insider knowledge as to this. So, can I make a scholarship? Yes, you may. Honey yeah. roll. I would also. Can we argue advantage for stick together? Uh, yes. And does Trompy have anything specific to artificing? As this is a magical artifact. Mm -hmm. Okay, no worries. Just I don't think yeah, so. Go ahead and make your roll. Yeah, all that experience has been right. Just throw artifice in there too. I mean, how would I go about doing that? This could be your big. I guess reveal. you would have needed to go to somewhere that teaches artifice. To be fair. Yeah, for sure. Uh, which would be the um, only literally the applied thaumaturgy guild. Yeah, literally where I go to to school. Um. Let's go to the powwow. Uh, what does everyone think I should do? I have scholarship of three. It's pretty solid. The, I only have a Trumpy, of one. Does Trompy want to be an officer? I guess that's the question. I think Trompy wants to do anything that's like engineering, scholarship be, you know. It does fall but, under like, it. But it, yeah. I guess it's a question. Do you want I, to know I, a lot I, about life? I want to. I want to have a skill that's just called academia, and it's like anything that's like not magical, but involves oh. a lot of folk smart shit, basically. Museum curator, basically. Something that's like where, that. That's where Trophy ends up as museum curator. Uh, I mean, 
this is a question for Dave, but that sounds like a completely valid potential to have a develop. It's just yeah. your ability to know a lot about a lot of things. Absolutely. That would that would be very much. Oh yeah. I had to potential. choose a lineage, huh? Um yeah. I, I would like to um point out on the wiki uh, a really cool set of uh, potentials um, it's things like the astute potential and the um, executive potential the erudite potential these are potentials that um, are built around broad skill sets that don't necessarily have anything to do with magic uh, the astute for example is about investigation and stealth it's sort of a Sherlock Holmes kind of potential mm-hmm um, and I think the one that you would like oh yes here it is uh, the erudite potential uh, relates to scholarship and medicine just type in potential in the search and scroll to the bottom At some point, I expect that Bax will be getting a martial potential as well. Oh, I want heroic potential for Bax. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah that works. That does the trick. So, or, sorry, which potential was it? Uh, erudite potential, which, um, and there is a, a talent under it called Erudite Reserves, where you can use the potential to pay f- costs for scholarship and medicine so that you don't actually have to tax them to use their talents. Very cool. Um, yeah, uh, if, if that gives me advantages to making this roll, then I would like that. Yes, it does. And also, it makes me very excited to see there's so many things dedicated to just being a smarty pants, <laughs> which is exactly what I've wanted for this character the whole time. Yeah, with erudite reserves as a potential, um, you w- would. You would have your um, your cunning, your scholarship, and your erudite um, potential. Like you'd be rolling all. Actually, you don't even need erudite reserves. You don't need the talent at all to do this. Like you just you're getting more dice. You're going above the the normal maximum um, and getting extra dice for these kinds of rolls. So how would I go about purchasing erudite potential? Add it to your character sheet. The sheet will do it, the rest. It would be like you you Thunder would take a... prodigy as your last lineage, and it'd be your potential. Uh, you don't right. necessarily need a lineage to t- get a potential, but Prodigy... Uh, so I just go to yeah. Potentials and add something and it'll yep. deduct. Prodigy just saves you um, the three experience or whatever Erudite, to your first and then, level. And so I just put one. It does? In my Erudite potential and that automatically spends points. Am I, am I wrong about that? Prodigy gives you your catalyst... So also, it gives you your your one dice. Also, as you know, as you all know, I'm very bad at my homework, so I have a renowned sitting on this character that ain't never fucking <laughs> I think that means it's experience. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> We're at the table all arguing about what plan to I? take it. Tropy just shows up and slams something down and is like, Yes. <laughs> I just wet. I just like my brain is just pulsating. I'm like, um, how do I? How do I? You've actually been there the whole time, but it's only when Wapi and Francis speak up to say, "Hey, let Troppy speak." Do you get to speak? Okay, we're gonna be spending points, everybody. We're spending a lot of points today. Um, what would be the benefit of say like leveling up my erudite potential? Uh, extra dice to roll when you're doing things that you have advantage on that relate to scholarship and medicine. Um, and, and then, so for the so so, let's say I'm leveling up erudite to level two. Does it have sort of the aptitude skill point, or just the like three experience points spent for each point of potential? Um, so the sheet will calculate the experience points, but they they do escalate. So as you level it up, they get progressively more restrictive. I see. Yeah. I see. I see. Okay, cool. Um, I will do that. I'm going to put two points into that. And, and if you have nine points uh, that you'd like to spend, the erudite um, reserves lets you use that potential to pay for scholarship talents, if you have any. Mm-hmm. 
you, you become kind of a non-magic spellcaster where your spellbook is your talents list. And you can just fire off those talents and do cool shit without actually taxing your rolls. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So, because I'm at the Applied Thaumaturgic Guild, even though I'm at the library, I'm limited to the skills and aptitude training that they offer, right? Uh, they and the library, yeah. And the library, okay. Uh, but yeah, um, erudite potential is something that would be taught here along with the daedal potentials. Where would I find the library? Oh, um, it's actually in the university uh, sheet. Okay, no worries. They gave you, yeah. They gave you a library pass to um, the Arcane University. Oh, I can level things to five? Fuck yeah. Yeah, and the, the, the university um, lets you level erudite potential all the way up to five. That's a built-in part of it. It's a bit expensive. We're leveling up our scholarship to five, baby. Mm. Anyway, uh, Sappers says um, that he's he's going to be staying in town for a while. He's a little worried about going back to his homeland. Um, he's been away for a long time. A lot's changed. He wants to kind of get caught up before he goes back, and he wants to make sure that they're not going to uh, dissect him and experiment on him for being a shiny new thing. As when when he left, that was a common practice. See something new, take it apart to see how it works. <clears throat> He doesn't want to be taken apart. He was from Aner? Yeah. Okay. Everybody, I've spent my points. I don't believe in talents. I believe in raw skill and, <laughs> and aptitude training. Fair enough. Um. All right, I would like to make my roll, I guess, on this damn bracelet. All right, you're making a roll to study the, the bangle? Yes. Cool. Uh, so do you have any scholarship erudite potential? Yes. Um, and do you have any uh, specific knowledge in um, magical artifacts or construction? I don't think so. I role play a Sigur. That's all I got for you. Okay. Troppy is like the the type of person who just goes on Jeopardy and wins like a hundred times in a row or something. Do I get pips for triplet stuff? Uh, no, triplet stuff is what's giving you advantage. So uh, has it changed the threshold? No. No? It, it allows you to roll your potential on top of it. Oh, hell yeah. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Three successes, that's all I got for you. It is made of extremely fine uh, quality materials. Um, so what you what looked like copper, what everybody thought was copper, is actually rose gold. Um, and the uh, wood inlay is a rare species of um, like white pines from far off mountain ranges. Um, so it, yeah, this is made of really high quality stuff. It's precious, then. It's precious, for sure. And uh, you know that magic typically requires precious things in order to function. You don't know why. You're not a Got wizard. It. You don't know how about enchanting. But you know that that is a typical thing. And so the fact that it is made of rare stuff is a good sign that it is indeed magical. And they're not just faking it by handing you guys some, some shit he threw together at the last minute. Wampy is going to secure uh, Sapper's current housing address to add Sapper's to the letter list. Sapper's gets a Christmas card now. Yeah. Or 
whatever the Talus equivalent is. And also a bunch of really annoying questions about magic from a child. Right on. So, so with that done, um, everyone is sort of packing up and getting ready to go to school. I, th I think this is the longest we've ever taken to get to the adventure. It's been an hour and a half. It's um, a heist. It's a heist. It's a heist, yeah. It's a lot, lot of prep. Uh, if it's got to be a two-parter, it's got to be. But um, we still got time. So what's the plan? Is the plan to construct an elaborate pulley system? Maybe a chant the rope? I think... Uh... Is it Kyleel or Elros? I think it actually is. That's going to um, get the try to acquire a shrink wand, essentially. Yeah. And yeah. All right. So everybody knows what character they're bringing up. Looks like oh. Reggie um, Bax. In this case, Trumpy, because I'm going to be constructing... Oh, Trump. Oh, okay. Right. Reggie, Trump. Okay. Let me update the spreadsheet. Reggie, Trumpy, Francis. Oh, are we going to get all the triplets? No. Sorry. Oh, well. That's okay. I could bring Wompy as long as well. Wompy's just going to sit and meditate otherwise. Up to you. You know what? I'm going to do it. I know it's sacrifices experience, but... I'll bring them both. Why not? Next. Okay. And then we have Elros. And oh. Mina. Okay. So l looks like Glup is not cut. Uh, yeah. Glup I'm going to I'm uh, I'm going to put him part of the mission. Um, so I have to split some points between each other. But I'm going to. I want to. I want to see if someone someone wants to come with me. Because we learned about a place where there's bags of holding that we might be able to swipe one off of. Uh, He'll return it afterwards, but he, I think, is stealing the stealing one of the bags from the store. Okay. Do you, just for meta knowledge, do you guys remember where this, what's going on at the store right now? Uh, I do not remember. Uh, the owner First, is dead. The, door the store? store is closed. Yeah. The uh... you guys killed your other party killed the owner, so that's not. Um... We didn't oh. kill the owner. We abandoned the owner to his death. There's a difference. You yeah. You abandoned the, the owner to be eaten by a monster. Yeah. He had it coming, probably. Oh, he absolutely did. He's a... so All of our characters in that were scumbags, and he he would fit right in. <laughs> so I guess technically it would be a lot easier to steal a bag then, even though we don't know that. Uh, either easier, or there won't be a bag left to steal, depending. Yeah. Pay what you get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just remembered that. All right, then. Uh, the team thus assembled. Did you say Glup is coming with you? Ah, uh, yes. He's gonna be. He's gonna be going to go steal a bag okay. potentially. All right. So I've switched Glup, Glup over to Mischief. All right, then. Um, yeah. Let's let's break it down on who's going where. Reggie, I believe your business is right here. Yep. So Reggie's staying here to talk to and plan with the mercenaries. Um, is anybody else staying with Reggie? 
Cool. Um, so then, um, who else is going out on a mission? Glup, you're going to go try and steal a bag of holding. Yeah. Trompy's going where the other two are going. Trompy's going, uh, where? I, with the, with the I triplets. Thought, I thought, I guess it's the, the triplets are going to go do the pulley with Trompy, mostly doing the work. Okay, so you're going to the um, the workshop over at the Applied Thaumaturgy Guild? I believe so. I would imagine I could get all of the materials needed for pulleys and ropes and stuff, and then come back somewhere. Yeah, you could, like, meet us there. Because the, the, the shipyard has to have all oh, that. Oh, it's got piles of it, I'm sure. So I should be able to get all the materials and then bring them somewhere. Um, yeah, um, and if you guys need access to a, a, a qual good quality um, place to make a magical item, uh, two of us have uh, have access to a, a workshop. Or a... so would that be Elros going over there? Uh, he's going to the yeah. He's going to the magic the SAU. Oh, okay. So SAU also has a workshop. Both um, ATG and SAU have workshops. Which one do you want to use? We have a lot of non-magic users this time. Can We can make a really Are tall we... person in a trench coat. <laughs> Are we all... Uh... Are we still doing the thing with the uh, possibly enchanting the rope to make it easier to carry it out? I think we should do that as like a, we should have a contingency plan. If the rope doesn't work in terms of the enchantment, we have the pulley. If the pulley has some sort of structural failure, we have the rope to hopefully yeah. give us some, you know. So we could, in theory, like go to the same workshop and work on it there. Yeah, this is a collaborative effort. It, my only question is: is like the applied thaumaturgy workshop worse in some way? Or are they just equal? The Appliance Thaumaturgy Workshop will um, supply you with any mundane materials that you need uh, free of charge, but they keep the copyright to anything you develop there. Ah. Yeah, and what quality is that workshop? Uh, let me check. It sounds like we should go to the SAU. Uh, it is a quality 7 workshop, um, whereas SAU is a quality 5. Um, SAU doesn't supply you with materials, but SAU, you own whatever you complete. We have a majority of the materials. We just need the magic part, really. I'm interested in uh, retaining control of our intellectual property how, how much, of the Oaks Brian community, so... How much, uh... Like, we need magical materials, right? How much, like, as a resource check, what's my target for that? Like, it's a, a pretty simple thing, is it not? Um, yeah, so... What you're trying to do is you're trying to enchant a rope to, if I understand this right, to apply a, um an effect similar to Delterra's Gloves of Lifting yeah. onto the things that it's that you tie up with the rope. Uh, as to, in terms of spells, that is a pretty straightforward kind of spell to cast. Uh, you're reducing the weight of an object. That's kind of straightforward. Um, so you're going to need to build an object that's going to have a... Um, let's see. Okay, so you need to make something that has um, a datal property.
So you're going to need, um, essentially you're going to need four successes. You need two successes to give it a quality of two, one success to give it the ability to have a datal property, and a second success to apply that property onto it. Um, when you're making I, I'm the talking role, in terms of getting the materials for it. All right, so when you're, when you're making the roll, the quality of the materials will potentially be adding extra pips, dice, or straight up successes, depending on what material you get. I have an idea, actually, that's different than what I think. It just came to me. Sappers has not left yet, right? Correct. Wampy is going to walk over to Sappers and remind Sappers. So Sappers, you owe me. I know you've probably got quite a few magical materials. This is actually a very hushed voices. I know you've got some magical materials. There's no way you don't. Of course. That's how I made these bracelets. Wampy's going to describe the player with the um, the rope that they need. This. Not tell them, tell Sappers what we're doing. Just describe that they need a rope that can carry really heavy objects to tied together. It's say, eat it today. We can make it if you give us magic, the uh, materials we need. And you owe me. <laughs> he says, uh, I, I do owe you. That is true. Um, okay, so make a... This, Actually, this is, this is a connections check, is what this is. Make is a really? connections check, and we're going to add your results to uh, what he gives you to improve the quality. Okay, is this this is just straight up connections for Wampy. Yeah. I need to I need to get another renown for Wampy, it's better than connections. I nearly I'll get it's, it's not really persuasion, like he does owe you a favor, so let's just see how strong your pull is on on calling in favors. Do I get to add anything to my connections by chance from this there's a lot of talents that do impact yeah. that um, I don't know if you have any I don't have any right now um, I was just wondering because like this is a established favor I'm not just going through my history of people and looking for a favor I've already yeah. established that this favor is and, and you're not rolling to see whether he says yes or no he's going to yeah. say yes okay. you're rolling to see what quality of material he's willing to part with to make good yeah. on what he owes you can I I don't have an outfit but I do have um, a fancy earring that I've had since this time can I use that here yeah absolutely that's a social item right there Oh, does that also mean that my fancy hammer applies? <laughs> one of them can apply. You All can right. Choose which one. In that case, uh, this will automatically succeed. But I'll roll it anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, Sappers provides you with um, some spider silk rope made from giant spiders that are found in uh, caves in the Thordil Mountains. I hand this to whoever's going to be making the rope. That would be me. And shake Saffir's hand and say, I look forward to our partnership. The, this rope is extremely durable, um, but you can see that it is also completely organic. So it has, um, well, I guess Trompy wouldn't know, but it, uh, anyone with artificing can see that there are channels through the fibers that would carry magical energies very well. This is a rare ingredient which will provide you with um, dice based on its quality and with your success it is a quality two so it's going to add a two additional dice to the crafting roll. Excellent. Artifice does require three things. It requires a casing, um, the uh, material itself, and the um, the uh, power source to activate the stuff. You have the material, that's the rope. So you're going to need some kind of casing to hold the rope in place. 
And then you need something that will power the spell. Can that something be just like a person cast it into it? Is that what this is? Or do we need something else? Um, how Do you think someone could get marbles? Oh, you want to use those magic marbles? I was just suggesting it. Yeah, I mean they're they're not um, they're not rare. They're pretty easy to get. That would give you some some pips to the roll as a, a piece. Could probably just ask Miss Maple further. Does anybody have that that talent? That like there was that guy that had them that once that we. Just oh, took I some. care. The Applied Thaumaturgy Guild's uh, marketing department teaches all kinds of really crazy talents for stuff like that. It's too bad I don't believe in those. <laughs> um, uh, we dealt with the guy with those orbs. So. Sales and Acquisitions has um, I Know a Guy, which I think is the one you were just talking about. Uh, we could probably just ask Miss Babel for them and just say that for our studies. For school. Yeah, if there's any for the, uh, the like, like, fridge. <laughs> The better quality materials you get, the more bonus dice and pips and things you're going to have going into this roll. Um, On a nice one, basically. Remember, this is a roll that needs to have four successes, um, or all this time you've spent today getting ready will result in not having the, the pulley. And uh, can Francis help with that uh, Delterra's stable meta aether with that roll? Uh, they are not casting a spell. They're building a device. Uh... Francis might be able to have a, a good backup plan going, though. Is there any kind of way I can use scholarship to get an insight on the best? Uh, sure. Yeah, you you want to roll your scholarship to see like how this is going? Yeah, basically how okay. like, how we can improve our our odds of making a nice thing. Um. Uh. What's it called? Uh. Uh. uh when you write to a schematic. Yes, you do. Okay, so would I use engineering or scholarship to write a schematic? Uh, writing the schematic would be done with engineering. Okay. Just the We thought. would need technical writing for that, right? Yes. I do not have that. Just a thought. We could... Could we do this at the Applied Thaumaturgy and then have Reggie fudge the paperwork? Uh, do you have a character a uh, character point you could spend to have technical writing for now? I do. I can totally do that then. Is this a talent? Uh, yes, technical writing is an engineering talent. If you spend yeah. one engineering and take time to develop a schematic, you may use it as an ancillary item with a quality equal to your engineering skill to any attempt to create, disassemble, demolish, or interact with the object contraption or construction. And so do I burn a character point? And then when I put in, I put in zero for the talent and put one out of three. Am I doing all that correctly? What was your question? So I have to spend a character point in order to get one out of three. You know, I, I have to spend that point in order to get technical writing, for example. Do technical writing if you spend it, you can use technical writing once. Got it. If, if you spend it three times, then you have technical writing as a talent. Correct. And so I would spend a, a character point like this, yes? Okay. And how would I... Do I just burn one? Yep. Make a note yeah, somewhere that you used it for. Yeah, it's uh, in the burned. There's a red uh, part for the burned in uh, character. You put your number there. Yeah, for the logistics. Yeah, so technical writing just lets you make it, right? And then... 
Actually, technical writing lets you use it. Uh, you you can make a schematic. You don't need technical writing to make a schematic, but it's it's not. It doesn't give you any bonuses. If you have technical writing, then the schematic gives you um, it gives you pips. Technical writing makes the schematic, and it can be used as an item for pips. It's I think it's the other way than what you're saying. Technical writing isn't to use the schematic; it's to develop a schematic and then use it as an ancillary item. But that's that the benefit of technical writing, right? Right. So, like, if she developed a schematic with technical writing, I could use it. Yes. Without technical writing. Correct. Sweet. I'll do that. You you can basically when when you make your schematic, your schematic becomes very a very potent item for relating to things. Otherwise, a schematic is just a schematic. You, you made a scribble. No one understands what it means. You barely understand what it means. Um, yeah, the technical writing means you know how to, to word things so that um, they're understandable and provide bonuses to people working with them. Cool. And then, so how would I make that role? My engineering and focus? Um, you just spend an engineering and you make it yeah. equal to your engineering. It's equal to your engineering skill. That's it. So it's a talent. There's no role needed. It works. Fuck oh, yeah! Well, there you go. So you have you have three. So you, right. So you get a mm -hmm. Q three thing. Yep. Um, and then you you were asking for some insight on how the project is going. Is that correct? Oh, no, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to find a way to contribute these skills oh, okay. to the process of go. building this, this machine. You have contributed. Um, so you guys are just going to basically steal one of the, the uh, magic marbles that powers the refrigerator? And that's, that's going to oh, be Oh, that was my other question. Right. I did want to do a scholarship role regarding, like, should we, use, should we try and use that or should we try and get something better? That's what I was trying to do. Okay. Would that be what perception and scholarship? Yep. I can't argue pips for my cigar outfit, can I? I don't know if I have one actually. Nope. Okay. It's it's kind of in Sigur's realm, let's say. Yeah, but I don't have an outfit for her, actually. This character does not have that yet. Four successes. All right, with four successes, um, you can see that while it's not impossible to make this work, um, it's much less likely than if you had a power source that was perpetual. These marbles are meant for temporary power sources. So mechanically what this means is the marble's only going to give like a, a pip like Got one you. a pip to the the resulting role to try and build this whereas if for example you were to use the eternal ice shard bax has been using to um ice his lemonade then you would be getting an automatic success equal automatic success is equal to the quality of that shard right i think we're going to cash that shard in for this heist okay because with the amount of money we get, we might be able to just buy more of those. Not just that, but we're this is a community project. We're, we're splitting this among all us orphans, I'm assuming. And so we can contribute in various ways to this heist. Yeah. You're, to, be, to be fair, you're not likely to see another one of those shards without journeying to the elemental plane of ice. But... Um, yeah, it's yeah. extremely rare. It's extremely rare, but... You, it, that near the cold spot, a couple of them did occur, and you get, managed to get one. Um, and they are extremely powerful. They are so powerful, in fact. What was the quality level I gave that? Because I think that its successes are going to mean you can't even fail this roll. I don't know, actually, what the quality of that item is. Did, did we put anything on your character sheet for its quality? Not to my knowledge. I have it in my inventory, but... Alright, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that thing is um, is above... It's, it's at least quality 4, probably higher. So if you use that in this construction, um, 
then all you have to do is, is basically just take your time and construct it. Um, and this is going to work. There won't even necessarily need to be a roll. If that's the case, Bax gladly gives over the charm advice for the greater so, community. For you, you, those of you who are artificers and have knowledge and skill of magic, this thing is an amazing uh, item. It is perpetually outputting ice elemental aether. Uh, it doesn't stop for anything. Uh, it doesn't have a limit. It's not being drained. It's just a source. Ice aether comes out of it always, at all times, forever. Does it get basically burned when we use it for this? What's that? Does it basically get burned when we use it for this? Like, this item no longer ceases to exist after uh, the construction? The item ceases to exist, and the, um, the pulley that uh, lightens loads that it grips... Um, it, it becomes a thing that exists. There are um, there are talents for disassembling items to try and get materials back, um, but it, without um, specific talents about th that relate to that, then yes, the item is basically lost. It becomes part of this artifact. Got it. Well, it's for the heist. Huh? Eh? If that's something you want to do, then yeah, rolls are no longer required. You guys uh, successfully assemble a pulley of lifting. Good job. <laughs> I can't imagine another use for this item. Like I'm sure somebody more, uh, somebody could bank it for a really long time. But I, I, you know, let's use it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The only other option I ever thought was to make the perpetual ice cream machine. Th this item could could have been used to make a much more powerful magical item yeah. um, but it's okay this this works it does mean that the pulley will always be cold to the touch uh, the last thing you need is a casing and at this point you can just like go get some scrap metal um, this thing is already so deeply magical it doesn't matter All right, so you have your pulley. <clears throat> uh, that takes a fair amount of time. So we're, we're getting into, uh, it's a, a few hours later, we're getting into the afternoon. You're starting to get word that the, um, that the uh, Thieves Guild is going to release the, the um, wagon train for transit. Uh, rewinding a little bit, was there anything anybody else wanted to do in the meantime? Um, yeah, L. Ross was going to go to the school to go get the, to get to see if he can perhaps uh, get a wand to borrow. Okay, who are you going to try and borrow a wand from? Um, I was going to ask my good old professor, um... Cal? Yeah, Cam, yeah. Or Cam, yeah, I'm sorry, Cam. Um, Cam does not have a wand of shrinking. That is not in Cam's wheelhouse. Cam is uh, primarily divination school, uh, but also has some like spells related to uh, stopping the plague. Um, is there anyone that he knows that might be able to help me get something like that? I need to. I want. To, there's some things I want to do with uh, shrinking items. Uh, Cam advises you that that is something that would be in the alteration school, uh, and that studying those spells would be definitely be a, a benefit to you. And he says, be very careful about using such spells on living creatures. Being polymorphed in unexpected ways can be very traumatic. All right, I guess I'll go to alteration, uh, um, thing, Dean. Uh, the Dean of Alteration is Delterra's stepbrother, uh, who does recognize you from your efforts to awaken his sister a couple days ago. So he's he's happy to meet with you. You, I guess, you explain that you want to shrink things. Yes. All right. So he, yeah. he he recommends some books to study, um, and says uh, if uh, if you can get the the basics down, I can teach you some uh, some spells. 
Um, do you would, would you perhaps have an item, uh, item like a wand or something I may borrow? Um, this is very important. I want to uh, see the effects of shrinking certain items. I, um, I don't want. I'm not usually one that tries to call favors, but I did help with the uh, with your sister and all. Says so yes, you did. All right. I, I would never let such an item out of the school, but if you would like to observe it, I will shrink some things for you, and you can watch. Uh, sure. Okay, so um, he spends a, like an hour and a half giving you a demonstration on uh, spells. Um, do you have Delterra's toolkit as something you've learned? I have not picked it up this second yet. Okay. So you like you me. don't know what syllables he's using then to uh, to cast the spells. If you had Delterra's toolkit, one of the things it does is it shows you what syllables other mages are using when they're casting. Uh, but yeah, you yeah, you yeah, watch him and he, he 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 polymorphs some uh, like chairs and and tables and stuff. Okay. He doesn't want to frighten you, so he doesn't uh, he doesn't do anything overly dangerous to a live animal. But he does find a chicken and shows you how to like change the, the color of its feathers and stuff. Um, but okay. he doesn't doesn't do any resizing. He's like uh, it could it can go very badly. Okay. Well, hopefully this will help me improvise. I'm more of an improvisation person myself. Especially with these like weird hands I have. Uh, you could make a, um, a scholarship plus cunning roll right now for me, though. Or scholarship plus perception. Okay, yeah, that's good enough. So, um, you know for a fact that polymorph spells are a thing. Uh, you've definitely seen students doing them, um, and you're pretty sure that um, he's not teaching you for a reason. Either he doesn't trust you, or, um, yeah. Um, he, he keeps talking about things that can go wrong, but you've seen students like turn themselves into foxes and eagles just for fun. So you're not sure what he's, he's worried about with you specifically. Um, but he's he's not teaching you polymorph for some reason. Well, it wasn't polymorph. I wasn't trying to learn. I was or just trying to learn. It. Yeah, he's he he's being very very careful what he teaches you about alteration, and you can tell because you have observed uh, that there are students that regularly do do things. Changing size is not all that much different from changing shape with magic. They're fundamentally all in the same sort of school. Um, so yeah, um, there. Are, Children generally don't shrink or grow themselves because the building is already kind of built for the sizes that they're at. Um, but uh, they do regularly turn themselves into animals just to have fun. Okay. You can ask him about it if you want to. Reveal that you know he's lying. Um... Uh... Yeah, I guess I'll be like, well, like, I'm not, I, I'm not actually going to be doing this to shrink, I mean, to like hurt a single per anything. I just need to. There's some ch chests I need to retrieve, and to get them, I need to make them so I can put them in the palm of my hand. That's all I. Need, that's why all I'm here for is. He sighs and says, "Is this a thieves' guild thing? Look, I, the city can do what it wants to do, and." Uh, if the Thieves' Guild wants you to steal something, that's fine, but that's not why I'm, I'm not opening this whole uh, door to you right now. It's because you don't have memorization, which means that your spells could do anything. You're in, an improviser. I've, I've seen your class list, and you're good at it, which is excellent. 
but you don't want to be improvising things that can go wrong that badly. What if, instead of shrinking the, the chest, you grow it and you break someone's house? Or worse yet, a person. The chest falls on somebody and hurts them. Uh, these are things that need to be done carefully. That's why we have the schools uh, built around memorization. Is when you use memorization for casting, it doesn't fail. It doesn't go wrong. It does exactly what it's designed to do. Yeah, that's why I was asking for something like a wand, because then I wouldn't have the brick, the the failure of my normal spelling casting. He sighs and thinks about it for a moment. All right, what are the chests made out of? Um, I guess I'll describe to him what we know about the chests, like the size and stuff. Okay. It says, come with me, and he takes you down to the laboratory. He actually uses a mix of um, alchemy and scribe work to uh, make a, um, a series of little patches. Uh, he does ask you, has, how many chests are there? Um, there is seven. All right, so he makes you seven of these little patches. They're like stickers. You peel off a piece of paper, the inside is sticky, and you stick it to something. He says, you stick these to those chests, and they will shrink about 90%. So they'll be about 10% of their original size. He says, their, their weight is going to change, but not that dramatically. So be aware that they're still going to be very heavy in your hands. Comparatively. C compared to something that would be that size. Um, he says, um, and you, I, I need you to promise me you are not going to stick these to anything that is alive. Promise? I promise. Okay. Go play, be safe, say hi to the Thieves Guild for me. All right. Say hi to your sister for me then. Hope she's doing well. So she is. She's, uh, she's still not casting, but she's up and about. And um, that's good. She, yeah, I was glad I was able to got put her, her in her armor. And she's, she's moving around on her own power again. All right. I guess I'll come back with the patches. Okay, you do so. And I only have one more thing if no one else has anything to do. You might be out of time, as that took you a while. No, I mean, no, not. that. that that's Elros's time. Oh. Oh, Glup wants to do something. That's right. Yeah. All right, well, let's let's do Glup's thing real quick, then we'll switch over to Reggie. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, he's going over to where the, where the thing is, the... Um, So, there's a, a sign outside the door that says, out of business, uh, the door is locked. This is Glup. Entering a locked door is not a problem. But just, just letting you know ahead of time, that's what it says outside the shop. Okay, um, uh, was it okay if I borrow, I know, um, uh, not Jackie, um, oh, oh uh, um, the person with the with the super amazing lock picks um, would have been able to borrow those. Um, I always remember Kirsten. Yeah, Kirsten, Kirsten's character. Henri. Yeah, Henri, Henri has that. He's not on the adventure. I don't know. Maybe you can go find where he is. He pro he's probably at the Thieves Guild. Yeah, so if I do just a quick stop, ask to borrow them just so I can help with the mission, the, the pick lock. And then go in, and I'll bring them back after I go get the thing. Cool. Yeah, Henri, I'm gonna let you borrow those. All right, I'll bring them back to the, the place to pick the lock. All right. Um, this lock needs five successes to get in. With that lock pick and your skills, I'm pretty sure you're gonna destroy that. But go ahead. What is lockpick? That's crime? Crime plus agility, yeah.
Does the lock pick bring give anything um, to lock open? Um, what was the quality on that? That was like some pretty decent quality. It is, and it has some special features too. Kristen will have that on her character sheet. Yeah, looking it up right now. So, level six. Uh, it's reliable, so taxes don't impact the quality unless it's fully taxed. Uh, it's durable. Taxes may be paid by three stamina per quality. I guess I'll just spend a tax on it and I'll get the six pips. All right, you don't even need to do that. It just gives you six pips because it's the tool. Uh, it, okay. If you fail, you can um, you can put the consequences of your failure into it, and uh, it's fine. You can also put the consequences of your failure through it into your stamina. Um, it's, yeah. It's a nice lockpick. It's not magical or anything. It's just really well made and made of uh, extremely durable material. Uh, four successes. Okay. Um, you can tax either the lockpicks or because of its properties your stamina by one to get your fifth success uh sh sure I'll... I'll tax myself okay it's just your stamina it's not anything big um, alright uh, yeah the, the door swings open you see the inside of the shop um some of the cases are empty. There's um, a lot of footprints in the dust on the, the, room, uh, the floor. Some stuff has been taken down. But there's a whole section of the shop that just has scented candles. Lots and lots and lots of scented candles. I see. Anything else besides scented candles? No. The cases that had the bags of holding are gone, and there was a, a door frame in the middle of the shop that's also gone. But the scented candles remain. I guess I'll just take a bunch of scented candles since there's nothing else really to take right now. Okay. Uh, put a note on your character sheet that you have, um, uh, I don't know, just like a dozen scented candles, but put a big old question mark on them because you don't actually know what they are or do yet. And when you get back to your party, those with magical senses will pick up on uh, the candles. I have some kind of alchemical magic going on with them. Uh, but it'll take a lot more time to identify than what you guys have. All right, moving to Reggie. <clears throat> What's going on inside the Oak Brine Inn? The new Oak Brine Inn. All right, well, I've been listening to what everybody's... <clears throat> all the information people are collecting and all the other shenanigans that are going on. So I'm just going to relay as much information as I have about the, the whereabouts of the, of the uh, mining cooperative stuff to the mercenaries that are assembled. Okay. Um, you know the route that they're going to take because um, yeah, your, your teammates worked out uh, what, the, what their most probable route is. Um, and you know the spot that your team plans to do the ambush at, but what do you want to tell the mercenaries? Your team also does have a, um, a official um, tax collection license for their uh, robbery that they're going to try and pull off. Do you want the mercenaries to try and jump these guys before? during or after your attempt? Um, do I believe that a distraction would be useful during our attempt? Yes. Okay, well, Dur <laughs> during would be good. Your, your, your party is basically going to throw down some uh, globes of, of darkness, jump down there with a magical rope, in the dark, try to tie it to as many chests as they can without getting killed by the guards, and then flee. <laughs> That's okay. their plan. Okay. 
I'll tell the mercenaries that that um, I know of a little group that's planning a bit of a heist. Uh, they they have all the paperwork sorted. Um, if you're interested, then uh, we can give you details and you can come in and assist. If not, um, you can take the money or you can take what you're owed, however it is that you're comfortable. Um, again, I'm not hiring you. I don't get to tell you what to do. I'm just giving you some options. And then I pull out a, a piece of paper, draw a roughly crude map of Slebury, and then draw the uh, the route that it's taking. I note where we're going to be um, making our perfectly legal tax collection heist or whatever. I say, this is where we'll be. Um, this is where we plan on intercepting. Uh, if you guys want to do, er do it on any other point of the route, uh, go for it. So also, you could you could wait and then just take it up with the courts. But again, like I said, uh, slim pickings once uh, once everybody else gets their cut. Um, One of the sort of out of towners that doesn't quite get the whole thief taxation thing uh, asks, like, "Wait, if you're if you're doing a heist, do we get a cut if we help?" And and sort of the others like kind of groan, like, "Ah, tourists." Um, but one of the savvier ones does uh, kind of pipe up and say, how does the math work out if we take before you guys do versus after? There's vastly more there than we can carry, even with magical means. But are we going to be taxed on what we collect from them? You're collecting what you're owed. Um, it's not a tax. There's no taxing on anything. This is a payment rendered. If you take a little bit extra, I don't think that's a big deal. Uh, I think there's enough chaos right now where no one's really going to bat an eye about that. And all the numbers are a bit fuzzy at this point anyway. Uh, that said, if you want to be totally above board about it, you guys are, it's like, I've given you a list of all of the, the tallies that uh, that you're owed. Um, you're, you're, um, you're legally within your rights to take that much plus interest. So if, if you want me to compute that out for you, you can, or you can just kind of eyeball it. But I don't think anyone's going to bat an eye about that, to be honest. The, the savvy one that, that uh, brought that up, like, he, he kind of still has his note that you gave him um, uh, yesterday, and he's like, I've done the tallies. I, I like what I'm owed. I think I'll take it. Well, that's good to hear, since We're collecting for the cities and for the people, and I hope that you will come and... Um, peruse our wares at some point in the future this is uh, uh I, what i'm owed is more than money uh, i just want to see the mining cooperative ha have financial justice if if anything else all right uh, they, they're very pleased with that um some of them are a little confused as finance was not the strong point the strong point is smashing things with weapons um but uh not all of them. There are some, some very savvy um, business uh, mercenaries here. Um, and so, yeah, they're, some of them are helping the others out to do the math and figure out, like, okay, we can steal this much, um, and it's considered legal, and all of them are looking at that number and be like, and if a few extras end up in my pocket, but they're not saying that out loud. Um, and, yeah, and so they're, they're looking at your setup, uh, what your the the kids have planned as they are off building, and they're like, well, if they're going to be coming from above, our best bets come from below. And so they start uh, getting getting plans to come up out of the sewers underneath the caravan, at the same time that the kids are coming down from the sky. Reggie says that sounds like an excellent plan, and it's a pleasure doing business with all of you. Indeed, I, I hope to do more here. business in the future. It's like amazing food here. I can't believe I never knew about this place. It's new. It's new. We're still getting things in order, but I'm sure the the, the cooks uh, would be uh, would be would be pleased. Uh, I'll I'll relay your uh, compliment. It says, "Oh, it's new. That would explain why this wall wasn't there yesterday." <laughs> um, yeah. All right. They're um, they're gearing up then and getting ready to go. Okay, um, I have a feeling that this heist will either be really quick 
or take an entire session. Um, we've been going for a little over two hours and it's getting kind of late for me. So um, I think we're gonna we're gonna pause and consider next session to just be a continuation of this one um, instead of doing closing and opening, if that's okay with everybody. Yeah, that's cool with me. Yeah. Because in, in terms of the timeline, we can't have you guys go to bed and wake up the next morning because they'll be gone. They'll be off to sea having other kinds of strange zombie fights. So, um, yeah. So we'll just pick this up next week right here in this moment where everybody's plans are coming together and we'll start seeing if, um, if it all pays off. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and... Go to bed. <laughs> See you guys. Good night. See ya.